it was started originally by Cliff Maxey, so he's the founder of the school. He was a teacher up in New Jersey, up in Lawrenceville, and he was able to get together funding and organize a place uh, for the school down here and slowly build it up and really just thinking about bringing students down here, high school students, getting them immersed in the environment and also thinking a little bit about how to how to also live sustainably and you know minimize your impact on the land as well. So there's a lot of thought put into how the buildings were built and you know how they were going to live off this land without imposing too much. So what you'll see as we're going around a lot of these buildings, they all have systems in the foundations. So all the roofs here have gutter systems. They're actually collecting rainwater. So right now as we're entering the rainy season, this is a really important time for us. So all the water is getting collected off the roofs and gets stocked up in the systems. And hopefully that will last us throughout the whole year. So aside from collecting that water, that means that therefore we have to use it really carefully as well. So everyone who lives here on campus and the students, they all have to take Navy showers. So making sure that we're saving water as much as possible. And then also you notice on a lot of the roofs, we have photovoltaic cells as well. So we've got solar systems as well as solar hot water heaters. So looking at how we can make the most of the resources here. And we've got our wind tower as well. So all these buildings are powered through this grid into time. Uh, so using solar and using wind for our power. So we can actually start right here. This um, gazebo that we're in so obviously provides a nice shade around here but it's also affectionately known as the poo poo garden so <laughs> right here in front of us here we've got these uh, cells that all the solid waste from all the toilets and, and bathrooms actually arrives here first and the settle solid um, sorry the solid settle out and the water then actually trickles through and right under these two gardens here on, on either side of the gazebo those are um, gravel beds and there's lots of bacteria that gets cultured around that gravel and they actually go through process where they actually convert all the ammonia into nitrate. Uh, nitrate yeah so that can actually then be used by the plants so the plants are actually actively removing all those nutrients that then actually go on to other cells further down the campus and so as they go along a lot of those nutrients are taken out and therefore we're going to minimize any leaching of nutrients out into the ocean therefore minimizing algal blooms and things like that so the idea is that you know, these gardens are growing by using our waste. Um, and that's a lot of like the theme that runs through the whole place as well. And people like to joke that every time you flush a toilet, a flower blooms around here as well. <laughs> so we've started a big program where we're trying to eat more uh, local food. So looking at minimizing food onto the island, there's not a lot that is actually grown here. So you have to import from Nassau or even further afield from Florida as well. And that of course, you know, leads to a very large carbon footprint. So we're looking at how we can eat more locally and think about how we live off the land and um, also thinking about the people on this island as well that need to make some kind of income as well. So every semester we have 48 students here. So roughly about 24 guys, 24 girls. Um, and they live right here on campus for those three months. They've got all their classrooms over here as well. And they do all their typical academics that you would get at home. So they do English and history and art and science and math. Um, but we've also got an added one, which is research. The focus is really more, you know, trying to take students out of the classroom. So not just learning for your regular textbooks, but thinking about, you know, how can we be immersed in the environment and learn about math, but right here. So the map is actually a really exciting program where the students are all learning about celestial navigation. So they actually go out on boats and track the sun and learn about math through that. And in science, they do marine ecology through scuba. So every week they're diving, they learn to dive if they don't know how. Um, and the other component of science is human ecology. So again, thinking about how do people live on these small islands. So they'll go out with farmers, they'll go out with fishermen. They get to learn a lot about just human impacts on the land and then looking at how they can instigate some kind of project down here to make a difference as well. So it's that exciting way of learning where they learn by doing as opposed to just listening to the teacher. We'll head over to the flagpole right here. This is the circle we call it here. So this is really the central part of the campus. So you see the Bahamian national flag up there. And the students meet here twice a day. So at 6.30 in the morning, they'll all group up here with the faculty and meet, sing the Bahamian national anthem, come up with any announcements they may have for the day. But then the students will take part in about an hour long exercise in the morning, five days a week. Um, and then the students go about, about their day with their classes. So it's actually fairly like a regular school, you know, like at 9.15, 10.15, 11.15, they have their classes, they meet for lunch again, and then they head out for the afternoon. And then, you know, that might be broken up with scuba or research class. But then they, at 4.30, they all actually get released around the Cape. So they have free time for an hour and a half every day. They each have a school bike and they actually get a huge area to investigate and explore in the afternoon. So a lot of them might go to the beach or they might go hiking in the woods. 
Um, some might do homework, depends on what they want to do. A lot of the kids actually, they like to, you know, suggest the faculty, hey, can we go out for a free dive? So they might just take a boat and go and do some exploring as well. But then at the end of the day, so at six o'clock, we need to make sure that obviously everyone's safe and everyone's back on campus because a lot of them are going out without any supervision. So they meet right here. So at six o'clock, we blow the conch horn. Everyone has to be present back around the circle. And the people who run the circle actually, they're called the caciques. So that's the student leader of the day. And that's a Bahamian Lucayan word uh, for leader. So the student leaders of the day run the circle and they get the you know, faculty might make announcements or you know, somebody's got something to, to comment on. They'll talk about that. And then also they'll come up with a quote for the day and any good memories that the students have shared that day. And then they decide who's the next person to take on the cacique role. And that's really interesting as well because the students are actually looking at each other and seeing you know, how has somebody exemplified leadership or caring attitude. And so they'll nominate that person and hear why they've been nominated. And then they'll head off for dinner. And then evenings, typically people um, have homework to be doing or there might be a nighttime class. They might have a guest scientist down who's going to give a presentation as well. Um, so the day's pretty action packed. You can see when you look up on the roofs up there, you can see all the photo voltaic cells. The big thicker boxes are the solar hot water heaters. So it's actually a really efficient way to use the sun and to save energy is to have, there's a lot of water pipes in these boxes. So as the water passes through, it gets heated up by the sun. So you don't need any kind of boiler system. So it saves a lot of power. Um, and the water is really, really hot. There's been a big push now where we're trying to grow more plants that provide food as well. So at any point, you know, you could go up to the passion fruit and get, you know, pick up passion fruit or get some plums maybe for one of the other trees as well. So um, there's a lot of thought going in. There's a whole program basically based around the plants that we grow on, on campus. This is the aquaponics system. So the idea behind aquaponics is that we have part aquaculture, so the growing of fish species, and then the other part is hydroponic. So we actually have our greens here, so these are all salad greens mainly, we're growing hydroponically. And we've like merged the two together. So inside we have our only freshwater tanks here. We have tilapia growing in there. So I'm sure most people have eaten tilapia before. They're really easy for species to culture. We have them growing in here and the water is always circulatory, so we're not actually using a whole lot of fresh water at all. We feed them daily and the water passes through again, it, kind of like our poopoo -poo garden is the idea as well, but this is for fish, so it goes through a filter, a biofilter, and again, we've got uh, bacteria in there that are going through the process of converting the ammonia to uh, nitrates and nitrites and so on. And it passes through here into the system, all by gravity, so it's just flowing down and runs into these beds, and the plants, again, are taking up the nutrients. So we can go right in here and take a look. You can see the water's flowing through. So we've got our salad green there, and the roots have grown. We're testing out different ideas of what this media can be, so we're trying to get natural things like coconut husk or uh, charcoal, local sponges, things like that, um, right now, so that you can minimize, again, like the footprint and importing materials. But otherwise, these seedlings can stay in here for up to about three uses, we can cut our salad beans off it. Um, and we feed our whole community lunch and dinner with salad greens from here. So these guys go through a process of seeding. So we have the little guys and then they'll get put in here. And once we've got enough greens out of it, they get removed and replaced with a new plant. And we're testing out different kinds of plants as well. These do really well. And then we also obviously eat the fish as well, which is another benefit. So we're getting to a point where hopefully like once every two weeks, we should be able to feed about our whole community. So right now this is going throughout a whole expansion. Wow. Uh, it's an island school research project, so we have the high school students coming here like several times a week and they're the ones responsible for feeding the fish. So we have students going out studying the reefs, maybe studying sharks or our offshore aquaculture um, program as well. So we're using the boats a lot and students learn how to drive the boats, how to dock them, clean them, check on fuel and oil and all that kind of thing. All so they have to do is just show up <laughs> on the boat. So we want them to learn as much as possible to like take charge of their activities as well. So right now you see them, they're going off for a dive. The second week of the semester, when they first arrive, we spend a week just learning how to dive and learning how to kayak. So they'll spend three days going out on a two night kayak trip with, uh, in groups of 12, or they'll stay here and learn how to get the Paddy Open Water Certificate. 